Hey everyone, Medusa.js is back to the channel and today I'm gonna show you step by step how to deploy your Medusa.js store. We will use for that Railway, Vercel and also we will need to set up Redis. We will cover how to connect your project, set up database with Superbase and get everything running in the cloud with free tier tools. This video is actually a follow up to my previous video on Medusa.js where I explain how it works and how to set up it locally. That video got a lot of interest, so I decided to make uh, this video and explain how to deploy your Medusa.js store. And probably it will be even series of videos uh, where I also explain how to connect payments and mails, for example. But now let's dive in to deploying Medusa.js store to cloud. And here is how the setup for today will look like. We're gonna use, as I mentioned, Vercel and Railway. A uh, Vercel is gonna be perfect for storefront deployment, but for backend and admin, you can use different uh, tools. In my case, I chose Railway, but also DigitalOcean, for example, is the good pick to deploy your backend and admin for a Medusa JS store. And as for database, we're gonna use Superbase and how to set up Superbase and Medusa JS store, I already explained in my previous video. So I recommend you to take a look just to be familiar with the project because I'm gonna deploy the same project what I used in my previous video. Regarding database, I have to mention that Superbase is not necessary, of course. Uh, Superbase is very convenient in case if you need fast MVP, but for the scalability, probably you will better pick the Postgres SQL, and actually you can use the one from Railway or Digital Ocean and deploy it exactly there. And also we are gonna need Redis. Um, Redis is used in Medusa.js mainly for background jobs and queues and also performance and optimizations. You can choose any tool which provides Redis. In my case, I'm gonna use AppStash. And of course, I'm gonna show you how to set it up. It's pretty easy. And that's it for the setup. So the first thing we're gonna have quick recap of the project, then we are gonna set up Redis and then we will deploy our backend and admin on Railway. And the final step is gonna be storefront deployment. That is the project I was using in my previous video regarding Medusa.js. So here we have folder demo store. And in that folder, we have two another folders, demo closing store and demo closing store storefront. As you remember, we adjusted a bit the storefront. Uh, we updated hero section in the homepage. Uh, so let's take a look at the website just to refresh our memory on that. Here is that website with that updated hero section. And let's make sure that shirt is here. So database is connected, everything works. So now we can proceed to deployment. And the first thing you need to do is to push this uh, project to your own GitHub repositories because we're gonna use them to deploy backend and admin to Railway and to deploy storefront to Vercel. As you remember, we need Redis uh, for our setup. So let's create Redis database. And as I mentioned for that, I'm gonna use AppStash. Here in AppStash, you need to create an account and then you need to press that create database. In that form, you need to specify the name of database. It can be whatever you want. And then you need to select primary region uh, the closest to you. Then press next. And here we can choose free plan, which provides us a max data size of 256 megabyte and monthly it's 10 GB. So let's press next here. And finally, let's press create. Database is created. So here we have information how to set it up. And for our case, we will just need that URL. Uh, here we need to provide token in that URL. And that token we can get from here. We just need to press on that button and it's gonna be copied to our clipboard. And then we can paste it here. And that URL we're gonna use in environment variables in Railway. We're going back to code and we need to go to a demo closing store folder. And here we need to open Medusa config.ts file. And in that file, we need to do some magic. So here we need to provide the next settings. So we need to provide database URL from env variables. We need to provide Redis URL and also we need to provide worker mode. And let me explain what this values means in this worker mode. So basically in the full scale project, you will need to do two deployments of your Medusa.js backend and it's gonna be one server and one worker. 
One instance is actually going to be your backend, your server, and another instance is going to be your worker. That's just to pull out all the jobs processing operations to separate instance, and server is just going to be responsible for backend tasks. And that is recommended once you go to full scale production. But in case if you have MVP or demo like I do, so I will use shared. So in one instance, we are gonna run both. After that, we have some configuration of admin and actually here we have that disable flag and this disable flag is actually needed in case if we're gonna deploy separately worker. In that worker, we are not gonna use admin. So we don't need to deploy admin there. And for admin, we need to provide backend URL as well. Then we need to provide these modules. It is related to our Redis setup. That's it, so now let's push this code to GitHub. And in package.json file, we will need also to add that pre-deploy script. And here we need to specify that command we already used, uh, Medusa DB migrate. Everything is ready for deployment of backend and admin. So let's go to railway and do that. In railway, you need to create an account and create also project it is uh, pretty easy to set up. And then you're gonna land on that railway canvas. And here we need to press that add a service. Then we need to select GitHub repo. I selected my GitHub repository and uh, the name of it is demo store backend. And we can see that it is appeared here. And here you can see that there is some deploy button appeared, but we shouldn't click it now. Let's click here. Then we need to go here in variables and here we need to do some adjustments. So let's delete uh, DB name and let's delete Postgres URL. We will need database URL, cookie secret, GVT secret, Redis URL, and also we will need that course variables. Let's press add all. And additionally here, we need to add more variables. We will need to add port here and let it be 9,000. Here we need to add database URL and it's going to be the same what we used for our local deployment. Then we need to add that Medusa worker mode and we need to specify shared. Then we will need to write this URL. And as you remember, it's going to be the one we can copy from AppStash. Then we need to add disable Medusa admin variable and set value false. That's it. So now let's try to deploy it and see if it will run successful or something is missing. And the build is successfully failed. And actually I know the reason because we also need to specify settings here. Let's do that now. So here we see that our source rep was mentioned and branch, that's okay. And then we will need to generate domain. Let's do that. Let's press so we get our domain generated. So it is using port 9000, the one we mentioned in environment variables. That's okay. Then here in the builder, we need to specify Nix packs. Then for the custom build command, we need to provide yarn install frozen log file and yarn build. Then here in custom start command, we need to press start command. And here we need to provide that command. So we need to go to Medusa server folder. Then we need to run yarn install, then yarn pre-deploy, the one we added to package.json file, and then yarn run start. Let's save it. And also here, let's add our health check path that will be health. So that will help us to check if our app is accessible and whether it's healthy. And another small tip as well, just to make build run successfully, we need to add this fallbacks here. So TypeScript will not complain. And as well, we need to remove package log file because we're gonna use yarn log and we don't need this to logs file. If there are two logs file, sometimes a railway build can fail because of that. Okay, let's try to redeploy it one more time. Build is successful now, let's click on it. And let's go now to that domain and check health of this app. Let's type here health. And we see that okay in the corner of the screen. Let me zoom it. So perfect, so the app runs. Now let's go to admin panel and check whether it works. So for that, instead of health, let's type app. And here is it. 
but we will not be able to log in because we need to create user. And for that, you need to install to your machine railway CLI, then you need to log in to your railway. And after that, we can create a user. So let's try to do it now. So it's better to open terminal in the backend folder of your Medusa store. And here you need to run something like railway login. We will do it uh, through the browser. That worked. After that, we need to run railway link to link our project to our railway project. Here we can press enter. Perfect. And after that, we can run that railway run npx medusa user. And here we can create some demo user with a any password you want. Perfect, uh, user created successfully. Now let's go to admin uh, dashboard and try to log in. So let's press continue with email and we are in, perfect. So as you remember, we will need to go to settings of it and then we need to go to publishable API keys and we will need that key to deploy our storefront. And here we can go to products and see that we have some products loaded. So database works. So now let's proceed with deployment of Storefront. To be able to deploy Storefront to Vercel, don't forget to create separate repository in GitHub with your Storefront and we're going to use it to deploy it to Vercel. Now let's go to Vercel website and let's create new project and deploy our Storefront. Here is it. So we need to press that import button here and then we need to continue with GitHub. And once I selected my GitHub, uh, you see that this demo store storefront appeared. Of course, you need to configure proper permissions. So you allow Vercel to get access to this repository. And you see that it is mentioned here that it is Next.js app. So everything is correct. So now we can press import. And before we deploy, we need to add environment variables, of course, because storefront has to know where backend is running. And don't forget to add that next public Medusa publishable key, the one we use in our local deployment as well. So we need to get it from the admin panel. So let's go to admin panel and get this publishable key. And here is the reminder in the admin panel, we need to go to settings and here we need to select publishable API keys. And here we need to copy that key. Then we can come back to Vercel and we need to provide it here. Also, we'll need to provide a revalidate secret for Next.js validation. So now let's try to deploy our app with that settings. Let's press deploy. App is deployed. So here we can see the snapshot of the app and we see here internal server error. We need to do some other adjustments, but now we can press continue to dashboard. Now we need to copy that URL to our storefront and we need to provide it in our environment variables as well. For that, we need to go to settings and here we need to select environment variables. And in that part, we need to provide our store URL and here we need to set a name of the variable next public base URL. Let's save it. Perfect. It is saved here. We can see it. So now we can redeploy. We are not yet done. Now we need to go to railway and update our course variables there. First, we need to update our store course. And here we can add URL to our storefront. And let's save it. And also we need to update that auth course. In the same way. Here we need to remove that. Perfect. So now let's press deploy. As we see deployment is successful. Now let's go back to Vercel and redeploy our storefront one more time. For redeployment, you need to go to this deployment tab and here you need to click on that three dots and here you need to press redeploy. And here is it, uh, deployment is ready and we can see correct snapshot of our storefront. So now let's go and visit it. Okay, storefront is running. So now let's try to go and check if the product is gonna load. Perfect, we see that integration fully works. Uh, now let's try to click on that product. Let's add it to the cart. Let's go to the cart. And now let's try to check out. 
Okay, we have that info. Let's uh, press continue to delivery. Let it be standard shipping, continue to payment. Perfect, so now let's try to press place order. Okay, we see that order is placed successfully. Great, so now let's try and go to admin panel and see whether that order exists there. And yeah, so we see that order came from that customer. This is my email and we have the price uh, of one t-shirt. Perfect, so storefront and backend successfully deployed and integrated. And also we can go to AppStash and see that our Redis is heavily used. So just to have this store in the full scale, so definitely free tier will not fit uh, for that purpose with the AppStash. Was it easy or not? You tell me in the comments. So finally we have a storefront and backend of Medusa running and store is operating, but there are some things missing. Additionally, for that store, we need to set up payments, for example, Stripe and also mailing. So user gets email once they order something. So user get confirmation by email. And probably in one of my next videos, I will explain how to set it up. Please let me know in the comments if it's gonna be useful for you. And also I have to mention that for this demo, we used uh, fully free tier tools, but once uh, you go to a full scale production, definitely you will have some cost of your infrastructure. If this video was helpful to you, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to not miss next Dev Insights. That's it for today and see you in the next one.